Okay, great. So good day. I'm Alita Hernandez, Nuestro Magazine. I'm here with Mike Manning, actor, producer. I just looked looked you up. You have over 27 movies, two Emmys. I'm honored to have you here. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me and uh, mucho gusto. <laughs> Habla poquito <laughs> español. Sí, uh, porque viví en, en Monterrey por seis meses en colegio en un programa de intercambio. Uh -huh. Sí, so, um, hablo un poquito de español, sí. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> my friends, my, when I speak Spanish, they say um, that I sound like a third grader. Like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because it's it's hard. I know. I, yeah. I grew up in New York, and then I, I kept my Spanish because of my family from being from Puerto Rico. So I kind oh, of Oh, like, Puerto um, Rico. Yeah. We shot, we shot um, season seven of The Bay, uh, an online series. That's where I got the Emmy. We shot that in Puerto Rico. Um, oh, did you like it? And I loved it. It was, it was, the <laughs> food was good. The people were nice. It was great. And I love Latin culture anyway. I just, um, I just, like, I just, I've always, for some reason, and it's, it's no, nobody else in my family is, is like this. It's not like we, <laughs> you know, we, I grew up talking about, you know, Puerto Rico or Mexico or whatever, but, um, I just, I, I've always had this fascination. Actually, you know what? I know exactly where it came from. One of my best friends growing up in middle school, um, his name was Eduardo and he was my neighbor. And when he moved into the neighborhood, he didn't speak any English. English. Oh. It was only Spanish. So I would learn Spanish to be his friend and he would learn English to be my friend. Oh. And when you're, when you're little kids, none of the other stuff matters. You're just exactly buddies, your buddies. And, and I, that's, I, until this moment, I never actually remembered where that came from, but wow, that's, that's exactly great it. that you remember. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. See somebody else influence your life, you know, with the culture. I wish other, I wish adults would be that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so do I. cultures a little bit more, um, so I did get to see the way out. I saw it last night. Okay. I was surprised. I didn't know what I was expecting. So I was, I was like comfortable in bed watching. And then I started, oh, ah, oh, you know, like, <laughs> there was some scenes yeah. like I didn't expect. I'm like, oh, I wasn't waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That seems to be the reaction with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how did you, who wrote it? Who wrote the story? Were you part of the writing of the production as well? So I found out about this project through a friend of mine, Nick Thur. Um, and he's one of the producers on this film. And he he and I worked on a film called Slap Face together a couple of years ago. And um, and he brought me the script. Uh, and we had a meeting with Barry J, who is the writer director. And this story is loosely based on some of the things that have happened in his life, oh, um, okay. Barry's life. So so Nick brought it to me. And in the beginning, I said, I just I gave notes on the script sort of as a friend. I was like, here, these are my notes on the script you right. know, interest, interesting project. Good luck. Right. And to, to their credit, Barry and Nick came back to me a couple months later and they said, Hey, Mike, we made all these changes to the script. What do you think? And I read it and I was like, wow, this is, this is actually really good. And, and you have a lot of layers here and interesting characters. And then a couple weeks later, um, Barry called me and he said, Hey, Mike, I want to ask you if you would be Shane. And, and I, <laughs> my first reaction was fear and i said wow i i'm this this role scares me this this story scares me and because of that i i knew i had to say yes and um and i did it was a little scary <laughs> uh not to give anybody out the plot or anything but it it was it was surprising i didn't expect the, the couple of things that happened in there i was like oh now i understand because there's a yeah, little, the, yeah. you have to kind of watch the story. It builds, right? So it keeps building, so you can really understand fully what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But, well, and that, that was, I would say to anybody that that is going into the, you know, maybe hears this interview and goes and watches it. I would say give it like at least watch it to, through the first thirty minutes, and then it'll it'll sort of set the tone with what the rest of the movie is going to be. Um, cause to, yeah, to your point, I think that the beginning of the movie, you know, sets up the characters and, and the lives. And then at some point you have Johnny Bouchamp's character, Alex, and then my character, Shane. And when those right. two connect, that's when the story really starts. And that's where you see these two, this sort of dichotomy of, of one character handling life one way and one character handling life the extreme opposite way. And, yeah. and that is honestly, that's what the movie's about. I think, um, you know, both of these characters were abused when they were younger, and one of the characters handles that by hurting himself. 
he turns to, you know, alcohol and substances and right. everything else. And, and that is how he copes with his abuse. The other character, my character, hurts the world. And so he learns how to fight and he fights back and he sort of takes revenge on people that he thinks are worthy of revenge. Right. And, and then, and then you sort of have this tug of war, push pull relationship for the rest of the movie. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, I was, I was like, you know, just relaxing and then I, Oh, this is not a relaxing movie. <laughs> no, no, no. And it was, I mean, I, and I knew, I knew when I said yes to this movie, what that meant. And so as soon as I said, yes, the next day I was in the gym, I had signed up for boxing classes. I took for three months leading up to the movie, I took boxing classes several times a week. And I had been boxing since I was younger, but so I wasn't starting from scratch, but I knew that physical aspect and being comfortable with, you know, the boxing gloves and the hand wraps, but also, and, and the movements, uh, but also, you know, having a more of a physical presence. I gained um, 13 pounds of muscle for this movie. And, and I knew, I knew that I had to because sort of that physical aspect and that intimidation right. is such a, a big part of the character. And, you know, you know, I, I hate it when when characters when you go and see a movie and it's somebody that's supposed to be like this this badass military person and they're holding <laughs> the gun they're holding the gun the wrong way and you're like ah come on like I don't exactly believe. yeah <laughs> and, and so I, I wanted that I wanted nothing with shame to come off as inauthentic. I'm one of those people I watch movies that I'm like they just did that wrong or they yeah I mean, we're terrible yeah. we're always watching me and my husband always yeah. watching movies like that going I don't think they saw that little edit right there you just because we do stuff like that so you 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 see it you know absolutely but yeah. um so how did you feel I know that you I was reading on your website you built your production company so really mm -hmm. you had a a, a sentence there that said the right story can change the world so tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Well, I think that um, film and television have such a way of opening people's hearts and minds to different ideas and different stories and different characters. And 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 there's a magic to that. And I think um, I always use the example Bambi. So Bambi is a cartoon that came out, you know, decades and decades and decades ago. And when Bambi came out, hunting went down that year. And it's a cartoon deer, but there was less mm. hunting in our country when a, a movie about a cartoon deer came out and you saw that deer uh be killed in the movie and 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 you know all everybody felt bad and hunting went down it's and that's a cartoon i and i wow. think when we have, I didn't even we know have that. yeah yeah and we when we have films like this when we have films that are about important topics like abuse um you know and and they're handled a certain way i feel like they can really you know my hope is that people walk away from this movie and they think about, oh, okay, like what's going on in my life? Do I need to talk to somebody? What's going on in the lives of those around me? You know, because there's there's that mask that we present to the world. And then there's what's really going on inside. That's and I feel like this movie is a cautionary tale on what happens if if you don't, if you're not honest with people. And if you don't, you know, talk to people and reach out to people and connect and tell them what's going on below the surface, then it either bubbles up in you hurting yourself. I think in this movie... Alex hurts himself. Right. Shane, Shane, my character hurts the world, and this abuse happened to them. But they're 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 they respond very different ways. Right. And and that's what I mean. That happens in our lives. That happens every single day. So, okay. um, I, my hope is that people watch this movie and say, okay, cool. Like I'm gonna, I I'm I'm not afraid to talk about abuse, especially as men. You know, as men right. we're 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 usually um, there's this this trepidation with talking about emo emotions and it is just as important for men to talk about emotions as, as women. So. And I yeah, think, and I think so most things. men feel like the, the stereotype, you have to be the mass, the masculine, you're the strong. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can be physically strong, but we all have a heart and we're all emotional. So we're be human beings that are emotional. And, um, and that's one thing people have to understand that, you know, you can't hold the demand so high up here that they need that emotional support and talk to somebody. And it's hard for that to happen. I have two sons. So um, mm -hmm. I've had the call when the girlfriends broke their heart for the first time. And it was, it was, I broke my heart, you know, mm -hmm. and trying to explain things to them. And it's, it's very difficult, but at least they know they can talk to me about that. But there's so many mm -hmm. people out there with the abuse, like in the movie, you got the alcohol abuse, you have the drug abuse, 
Okay. And then there was sexual abuse on su- at some point in the, in the lives of these men mm-hmm. um, that transformed their, their adult adulthood. So hopefully, you know, people out there who need help and that's, that's always trying to me get the message out there. Please reach out, you know, like people need to call their suicide lines. I know suicide's mm-hmm. gotten high too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and show also the big picture because it is, uh, during, um, uh, celebrating LGBTQ. So, um, that's a whole nother gamma that you're putting on because of the stereotype and the way people deal with others outside, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, first I'll say that, um, it's great that your sons have you and have that relationship with you, to be honest about that, because that's just so important and it starts young, you know, the ability yeah. to talk about emotions, especially as a man. Um, and I think I think also um, something you said about the breaking LGBT stereotypes, I think that's really important because I think that so often um, LGBTQ characters are portrayed a certain way on screen. And, and with this, the thing I like about Shane is that in the end of the movie, you don't really know what he is and it's sort of not defined, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's and you're like, oh, wait, is Shane like this or is he just using physicality to right. get what he wants? And what is this? What is that? And that's what I think humans are. Humans are not this or that cut and dry, you know, black or white. I think that humans are, are interesting layered characters. And I feel like every time that I can, I can sort of portray that on screen and show these different layers that are not necessarily, you know, this in this category and this and this and this and this, but like being a fully fleshed three dimensional human being. I think that that is, that is what I want to do, especially when it comes to breaking LGBT stereotypes because I think it's it's definitely happening and it's happening more especially in the last five years but I think that we still have a ways to go where society can look at a character and it doesn't matter if they're LGBTQ it matters all the other things matter you know it's an aspect of their lives but it's not the aspect that defines the entire character exactly exactly still seeing a person as a person as a human being that has the same blood that we all have and that's the whole point you know, and helping all those out there that have been abused and and give them avenues to, you know, to, to get help. So absolutely. Yeah. Now, did you have any hand in the other movies as well that were on the I had a list of different kind of movies or you I know you starred in no and the way out. And then did you have part of producing some of the other ones? Um, not this time. So I, I okay. have uh, personally, I have a handful of other uh, films that I am working on and um, that I've been in or that are coming out um, this year um, that I produced. But um, I, I think with this, the list that you had received, it, it, it's just the way out. Okay. Um, but yeah, with 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 producing, you know, I think that um, producing was something that I didn't really set out to do when I moved to Los Angeles. I've been in L.A. now over a decade and I moved out here from Colorado to start acting. And um, some of these producing jobs just sort of found me. And I started producing in documentary films mm. and um, and and it was just like, oh, hey, I'm going to do this favor for this film because I care about it. And I'm going to do this favor for this film and this favor. And I started doing all these things. And, and one day I woke up and my agent at the time, he goes, Mike, you're producing all these movies. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe I was like, you're right. You're I am producing. So I, I formed a company and um, and that's what I, I've been doing ever since. And that's what I I try to do. Um, like we just talked about with projects is, is to, I'm writing a film right now that I'm really, really excited about. It's also in the thriller vein. And in that film, I am very, very purposefully breaking stereotypes. And, you know, I have a strong female protagonist, badass as my lead character. And, and, um, and I think that she's going to show people a different way than maybe they've seen before with a lot of some, you know, a lot of these movies. So um, that's, that's what I love to do. And that's what I, you know, and as a, as a producer, I love to find different stories. And then also, you know, with this film in particular, as an actor, it was exciting for me because this is, I can honestly say, this is the craziest character I've ever played before. <laughs> when I said yes to this role, it scared me. And I knew that I was going to have to go to some of these dark places to, in order to do it justice, because in the movie, yes, you do have that physical aspect and you have the, the boxing and the fighting and the revenge and everything else. But, but also with Shane, I think you have the hurt and the brokenness and mm. the, yes. the sadness and the scar tissue that's underneath that people can see so that by the end of the movie, it's not just you, you saw what he did, but you understand why he did it. 
And right. that is what I what I like to do with with these characters is take right. characters that might otherwise be extreme or just crazy or just this or just that and add like another layer of, of humanity to those mm -hmm. so that people can relate to them as much as possible. Well, I enjoyed the film. Good luck with this film. And we look forward to uh, you want to name anything. Is there another name or anything of another film coming out or? We gotta wait I, for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's uh, there's another. If people like the horror thriller uh, genre, there's an action horror movie that I have coming out with Randy Couture called The Bellkeeper. Um, that should be really exciting. There's a romantic comedy that I have um, called The Engagement Dress, where I play the exact opposite character. <laughs> um, so that's fun. And then um, and then season seven of The Bay just is is online now, and and that's a series that I play. A teacher uh, that is trying to find my long lost lover. So it's. Uh, it's <laughs> and where's the bay like at? Where's uh, the bay? The bay is on um, Peacock, on Amazon, on Tubi, and on um, uh, Popstar TV. Okay, perfect. So we can put that down. And then I have your Instagram as Mike Ma Mike Dash Manning, I think it is. And yeah. any other information you want to get out there to your fans? Yeah, no, just uh, well to my fans. I want to say thank you for the support, and um, and I hope that I can continue to create characters that y'all like. Um, if anybody is interested in what I'm doing, yeah, I'm just Mike Manning on social media, and then my website is Mike Mike Manning info. Great, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mike, and and good luck with on your all your films, and hopefully we'll talk again to talk about the next film when it comes out. All right. Gracias, Arida. Gracias a ti. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Bye. Let's see. Stop.